Hi, Phyllis here from southernfrugal.com. Today we're going to make a chicken in the pressure cooker. Now this is a large five and a half pound, I'm not sure if it's a fryer, but it's not an old hen, it's a regular chicken. And it's the Fieldale. There's where it comes from. See that? Okay, these are great chickens. They have all natural, no added hormones or steroids, and they are really, really good. So what I'm gonna do is give this uh, chicken a good wash in the sink and get out the little innards that, you know, the neck, the heart, the liver, and all that. And I'm gonna go ahead, and I've got my pressure cooker here, and I'm gonna add four cups of water. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that burner on high. Now I'm gonna add about, that's probably three-fourths a cup of chopped celery, just to season it a little bit. All right, I'm gonna get this washed and we'll be back. All right, I've got my chicken washed and uh, in the pressure cooker. Now I cut the little tail off and that little extra skin that's around the cavity because it's just mostly skin and fat. So I just cut that off to kind of eliminate some of the fat. Now I've got uh, four cups of water in here. I'm gonna dump the celery in just right on top of it. And it's already started boiling, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on. Now, you know, if you get yourself a pressure cooker, which I really think you should, you can save a lot of money. And I would strongly suggest you get the kind that is stainless steel. And you can order those um, from Amazon, and I guess you can get them in like Bed Bath & Beyond and some stores. Now, you, you do not want the kind that is the, uh, you know, got that black coating, I forget what you call that, the uh, non-stick surface on it. You need, you need to get one that is stainless steel. All right, so now that it's boiling, and I make sure that my little uh, gasket, or um, I'm not sure what you call that, but anyway, it comes out. And mine has a little hole there, see it? And it's got a little place here where you hook it on to make sure it's in there right. Because of course, after you use these, you have to wash them every time, including your little um, uh, gauge here, or whatever you call that. All right. So I'm ready to put my lid on and I just line up my arrows with the top lid and this little arrow down here on the bottom lid and close it up. Now, here's what I'm looking for. There's a little temperature gauge right in here and that's also a safety valve. And what has to happen is steam has to be coming out this little vent hole here. There's my little uh, pressure control gauge and it's got zero and then a little figure for the steam and then one and two and I'm going to cook this chicken on the uh, number two setting and I'm going to cook it for about 30 minutes once this comes up to pressure. So what I want to do now is go ahead and put my little gauge on and I've got it to steam so that the steam will come out this little hole because I want it coming out about six months, six, excuse me, six inches up above this little steam vent and then I'm going to close it because you want to get all the extra air out of it as you're uh, heating it up. So it's already boiling but it's going to take a while. Now once this little pressure gauge or safety pressure gauge comes up, it's a little purple kind of bubble looking thing will pop up then you've got uh, a lot of pressure in there and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the number two setting. Now all pressure cookers, you know, have different types of uh, pressure gauges on them, but they all work basically the same way. You're going to cook with steam under pressure. So this is the way I cook inexpensive cuts of meat, like I think I did a video on the beef tips, which I fixed in here, and you can fix them really quick and they'll be super, super tender. All right, so we're gonna be back once this uh, steam starts coming up. Now I want to see if you could maybe hear this. This uh, sensor gauge right here is getting ready to pop up. 
can see it down in there, it pops up to do with temperature, and that's of course in case anyone ever you know, cut the burner on, had the lid on, and forgot they had it on the stove, and this sensor uh, little plug would, would blow, so that way there's no danger of the whole thing blowing up in your face. That's the purpose of that. I think it's ready to come up now. It's not ready quite yet. And the steam coming out this hole right here is the one you want to watch for because it needs to be coming out pretty fast in a steady stream up about six inches from this. It's really not complicated. I might be making it sound complicated, but it's really not. Pretty straightforward. And I've got my burner on high. Now, once it comes up to pressure, I will turn my burner way, way down. And that's what makes this uh, such a great economical thing to get because uh, it's going to take a lot less electricity to cook the chicken in, in the pressure cooker than it would to, say, cook it in the oven or even in the crock pot. Plus, it's going to tenderize anything. I mean, the absolute toughest cut of meat, this will tenderize. All right, we're still waiting for that little pressure gauge to come up. I see it down in there. It wants to. And the chicken was pretty cold, so there it went. Did you, hit, did you see it? See, it's cut off the... Uh, it's a little... Uh, in my case, it's a little pink purpley looking thing. All right, now we've got pressure coming up above the pressure cooker about six to eight inches in a steady stream. So now that means it's ready for me to turn it to number two, and that's going to stop the steam from coming out and the pressure is going to build in the pressure cooker. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my burner down to medium, and I'll probably come back in here in 10 or 15 minutes and cut it down to low because you can literally cook the whole thing on low once it gets up to pressure. All right, when this gets done, which should be about 30 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and set my timer, and we'll be back. Okay, the pressure cooker has been uh, on medium. I turned it down from medium high to medium about 10 minutes ago when we first got the pressure up. And now, can you see that pressure is coming out the little hole? That means I need to turn it down further. So I'm going to turn it down just a little past medium low. And that should be uh, good enough to, to uh, let it continue cooking uh, for the next 20 minutes and then it should be done. So anytime this, you can see a bunch of the steam is coming out, when you've got it on the right pressure button, that means you can turn the heat down. You, you, it's okay to have it coming out a little bit, but see it was coming out a lot. So I turned it down to just past medium low. And sometimes if I'm cooking something for a longer period of time, I'll actually just put it on low. So anyway, we'll be back when this is completely done. Now, in this particular case, I cook it uh, the pressure up on the number two button for 30 minutes and then I allow the pressure to go down on its own. In other words, I cut the burner off and just leave it sitting here. And after that, it probably takes another 20 or 30 minutes for the pressure to go down. But the burner won't be on. All right, so when all that happens, we'll be back. Okay, this chicken has been cooking for 30 minutes now. Now, because it's five and one-third pounds, I'm gonna actually let it cook another 10 minutes. I think my timer just went off, so I'm going to cook it just for 10 more minutes because I just really want it kind of falling apart, you know? So I'm going to cook it for 10 more minutes now. I've got my burner all the way on low now. And you see I've got some steam coming out, but it's okay. It's not that much. So I'm just going to turn it on to low for another 10 minutes, and then I'm going to let it sit here for probably another 30 minutes and then the pressure will go down. All right, we'll be back. 
Okay, my chicken is done now. See the little safety valve? It's still up. Now, I wanted to show you a quick way of cooling this down. You can just let it go down to pressure, and really when you're cooking chicken, that's probably what you should do. But I actually cooked this chicken in an extra 10 minutes, so I should be able to just take it to the sink, put it down in some uh, cold water, and it should go down pretty quick. So we're going to see. All right, it's very heavy. I don't know if I can lift it. All right, I'm going to have to come back. All right, I've gotten it down into a sink of cold water. Let's see if you can see that. There's a little pressure valve, and it should be going down pretty quick. You do need to wait until that goes down. Now, this other valve over here, before you open the lid, you always have to make sure all the pressure is out. Because if you don't, and the pressure is still in it, if you take the lid off, it'll just everything will spew out the sides. And I've done that before. That's how I know that that can happen. Because I'm a little impatient. All right, let's see where our pressure valve is. It's still up. Another way you can do is you can release some of the steam by turning the handle there, but I don't want to do that because then it'll come, a whole bunch of steam will come out and steam up the camera. All right, we're still waiting for this little valve to go down. It should be going down. And see, this is going down. It's not steaming out there at all. Just a little bit, maybe. All right, still waiting for this. It should go down. There, I think you can see that really good. That's what we're waiting for. Let me turn it around so we can look at both of them. No, can't see both of them at the same time. All right, we're still waiting. Should go down any minute. And of course, it makes the water in the sink very hot. Maybe I'll put some more water in it. Yeah. Now, another thing you can do is run water over the side of it. But you have to be careful when you do that because if any water gets over here or over here, it kind of sucks it into the pressure cooker. So let me see if I can do that. Just a little bit. That's colder water. Remember, this is under pressure. It's very, very hot. Let's see if that does the trick. Yeah, it's going down. Let's see it now. And see, I'm making sure no water gets over here, and especially not getting right there because it'll suck it in there it went. Did you see it? All right. That, that worked really good. You just want to make sure that water doesn't get down in here. Not that it would really hurt anything. All right, so now it's safe to take this knob off. And I don't know if you can see that. Let me get up really close. See that right there? It shows steam. It's a little picture of steam. You want to turn it there and if there's any steam left in it, it'll come out then. And then turn it to zero. And so now you know that there's no steam in here. Alright, I'm going to see if I can lift that out. Oh, There we go. We'll let that water out. Alright. Now it's safe to take the lid off. See how my arrows line up? I've got another little arrow right there when you put the lid on. All right, let's have a look at this chicken. All right, there it is. Pretty much pulverized, which is exactly what I'm looking for because part of this chicken I'm going to use to make a chicken pie, and the other part along with a lot of the uh, liquid I'm going to uh, put into a freezer container so that way not this coming week but the next week we can have chicken and dumplings. I just want to fix but half what I normally fix and I'm going to do the chicken pie this afternoon and there's all the celery and that juice is all cooked out into the broth. All right, we'll see you next time. I hope you'll get you a pressure cooker. They save so much time and you can, you know, get inexpensive cuts of meat, just brown them first and put them in with the water, and you'll get a little booklet with your pressure cooker. Now, I've got um, a little uh, 
Amazon, uh, I forget what you call those, little thumbnail type thing on my website. In fact, I've got a whole page that says pressure cooker. And uh, if you click on that, it will take you to Amazon and you can see the different types of, uh, uh, of stainless steel pressure cooker. Because believe me, that's what you want. And you don't want it lined with that non-stick stuff. You just want the whole thing stainless steel, okay? All right. Uh, let me see if I can think of anything else. I don't think I can. All right. I hope you'll get you a pressure cooker because they, they really save you time. All right. We will see you next time. Okay, we are back, and I want to show you the chicken from this chicken. All right, see that? Let's see. Hold it up closer. Okay, the chicken weighed 5.37 pounds. The cost was $8.54, so I know for sure I can get four meals out of it, and that's going to make it $2.14 per meal. Now, there's just the two of us, but what I'm going to do is freeze some of the chicken and some of this broth. And I'm going to hold enough out of the broth and a little bit of the chicken, well, probably a third of it, to make the chicken pie. And I'm going to do a video on that as soon as I get through with all this. And then here's all the chicken bones and whatever else. And here's what I'm going to do. Put in about a teaspoon of salt. That ought to do it. Four cups of water. I might even add, add a couple more cups. In fact, I think I will. Now, there's the broth that cooked off the chicken when I fixed it in the pressure cooker. Now, all this definitely takes time, but if you think about it, in the end, you're going to save a lot, lot of money. All right, so that's going to make six cups of water and all the stuff that I pulled off the skin, the bones, the back, everything is all in here. Nothing was thrown away. Now what I'm going to do, there went my ice maker. <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is simmer this on the stove for about an hour. Now I'm going to go ahead and put my pressure cooker top right back on it, but I'm not going to cook it under pressure because if I do, it will just totally disintegrate the bones in the chicken, and I really don't want that, so I'm going to put my little knob back on, and I'm putting it there. See, see it just says steam, so that'll let some of the steam come out, but the pressure gauge will not come up, or the sensor. And so I'm just going to simmer this for about an hour. Then I'll strain all the bones off of it, and I'll have chicken broth, and I'll have probably about six cups. And I use that chicken broth to uh, make uh, egg drop soup. So that would give us definitely a good meal of egg drop soup. Now I'm getting ready to fix the chicken pie, so I've already boiled some potatoes and some carrots. I have They're not totally done, but anyway, so I'm going to take part of this chicken out. Now this is the white meat and the darker meat. Now on the Fieldale chicken, you can't hardly tell the dark meat from the white meat really. And we'll put some in this one too. Now this um, chicken and the chicken broth breathes really, really well. So this will, uh, I think I'll say, see maybe that much to make the chicken pie so there's a little more in there but we will probably get let me just guess and say we would probably get uh, four servings out of the chicken pie for sure then I'll use this for the chicken and dumplings or some other type of uh, casserole maybe I really like the chicken and dumplings best now here's my broth I've got six cups so I'm going to fill this up to almost the top and fill this one up to almost the top. Well, probably all the way to the top. All right. Now, I have not put any salt in it. The only thing 
that's seasoning this is I cooked it with the uh, celery. So the salt will come in when I get ready to make whatever I'm going to make with this. All right, so these two are going to go in the freezer. This is going to go in the chicken pie that I'm getting ready to make. And then what's in there is also going to go in the freezer unless we decide to have uh, egg drop soup tomorrow maybe. But anyway, I will have six cups of chicken broth from this. All right, so there you have it, a really frugal chicken. All right, see you next time.